Hello, I am Chris Menard. Let's take a look at mastering data analysis in Excel. We're going to use the trim function, the unique function. We'll do filters, sorting, we'll use tables, we'll use the status bar. Uh, step one is kind of fixing or transforming your data. Step two is looking at some stats, what's the highest, what's the lowest, the sum, the count, that type of stuff. And then finally, step three is where we actually go and get the analysis. Pivot tables are usually used for this. Uh, then we can make some pivot charts and that type of stuff. Let's go ahead and dive into this right now. So I have this Excel file, either someone sent it to me or I downloaded it from somewhere. Step one that I would do is just take a quick look at the data, make sure I've got one header row when I do it. It's in row one. I want to make sure, I want to see where the data ends. And I also want to make sure there's no blank rows or blank columns. To do that, I use Control A. That'll only select the range you're in. Control period will jump you from corner to corner to corner. So when you get down here to the bottom, I know that I only have 54 rows, but act like I got 485,000 rows. That's just a long way to scroll. Once I get to the bottom, I scroll down just a tad. Make sure I don't have any blank rows down there. I've seen people put in blank rows and then continue with their data again. So it looks like we're good right here. Click back in here. I would convert this to a table. It does a lot of features for you. One, converting to a table will auto fit. It'll also let you know if you have numbers in as text. If you don't convert to a table, you can still do it. It's a range right now. Watch this. I'm going to select column D. I know that cell D1 is text. If I look down at the status bar, I've already checked average through the word sum. So now my count and numerical count should only be one off. But look, there are three off. That tells me that two of these numbers in the price column came over as text and not as numbers. So here we go with the table. Either insert table or control T. Control T is my method. Do you have a header row? Sure, everything is good here. Click OK. And here's your auto fit. And here's quickly identifying the text stored as numbers. Look at cell D5 and also look at cell D10. You can either fix this with the number one trick or just simply select them. Click this icon and say convert to numbers. It did. Real quick on the test here, I should just have a difference of one, 54 and 53. In case you're wondering what is the number one trick, this would come in handy when again, there are hundreds of thousands of data in this column. Over here, one, control enter, copy it, highlight just the price, don't highlight the column. And then you wanna to go to paste of special, multiply, you're multiplying everything by one, hit OK. Now all that is one. And then you would delete this over here. Back over here, so we know that all the prices are correct. One item, let me go fix this order date real quick. Again, I'm gonna select the order date. They came over as general, but they need to be a date field. They actually are correct. Home tab, general, short date works for me. I look at the dates and say, do they sound reasonable? Yes, I was expecting to have data from 2023. If you have multiple years, when you created the table, it turned on filters for you. This is when I would hit the filter arrow. If I had multiple years, it would show 2023, 2024, 2022. And I'm like, okay, those are the correct years. If I saw 1967, I would be like, oh, this doesn't look like it's right. So, so far, so good. Order number looks good. Product. This was intentional. And this is what a lot of people don't know. When it comes to filtering, filtering does not care about extra spaces. So if I hit this drop down and I'm just counting those cities, I've got six cities listed. Cancel out of here. I know that this is wrong. Look at cell F9. Cleveland clearly has one or two spaces in front of it. Uh, so let's just scroll down through here. I may not see any others, but some of these cities have extra spaces after them. Cool way to figure this out, two easy ways. One of my favorite, I'll do this twice, is to use the unique function. 
again highlight just that column in the table and there you go right there with the unique function notice Atlanta is listed multiple times Cleveland is even Boise so that means there's a lot of extra spaces after Boise in some of these examples the other way to do this if you don't have the unique function because not every version of Excel has unique but this one will definitely work I'm going to highlight the column copy it come over here and paste it perfect you could have done paste values too uh, select leave it selected go to the data tab and do remove duplicates I do have a header row it is called store hit OK hit OK and once again same results as unique just a different way to do it one little item to know though which one do I prefer I use them both but the unique function, if something changes over here, the unique function will include it, but the flash fill will not. Flash fill is static. I did do an undo. Uh, I am going to get rid of these. We know we should end up with a total of six cities. So to fix them, one of my favorite Excel functions, I'm going to call this location, is the trim function equals T-R-I-M open parenth cell F2 is what I want to fix because I'm working in a table we have what is called a calculated column here it is right here when I press enter the trim function removes any unnecessary spaces everything is perfect I could if I wanted to do a copy paste values and put it back in column F but I'll be honest I'm kind of okay with it being called location so I just need to copy, control C, paste values here, copy, paste values. Now the function has disappeared and I would remove or delete column F. If you say, Chris, I really want location next to payment, sure. Go ahead and select the column. I'm holding down the shift key, I'm over on the border, I'm dragging, look at that line, I'm going to let go of the mouse, let go of the shift key, I just moved a column. Easy way to do that. Okay, let's go and do a few stats. I want to know what's the maximum price equals max. Highlight it. The maximum price is $15.96. What's the lowest price equals MIN. Highlight it. I could continue with this with some count large small on and on the median the mode but if you want to quickly get a lot of those this is a cool tip click inside here go to the data tab and i have data analysis already running you're saying chris i don't have data analysis over here you're going to need to go to file options add-ins here is your analysis tool pack it'll be showing up down here you're going to click on go and you are going to turn it on i'm going to stay here and turn it off real quick mine just disappeared from data so now i got to go turn it on just to show you that add-ins analysis go check it and click ok and there it is so here's how this works again i'm looking at the price field i'm going to select data analysis which one do you want to use here? There's a lot of cool stuff in here, but the one you're probably going to want for this is the descriptive statistics. Click OK. This dialog box appears. What is your input range? It happens to be the price field. So it's like the price field. And then the question is, which one of these do you want? I'm going to do the summary. That is going to give me the mode, median, sum count where do you want to put it i'm going to select an output range because i don't want to put it on a new worksheet but i could and i just want to stick it right over here in column k k4 looks good hit ok you put it wherever you want to auto fit it look here we've got the mean we've got the median we got the mode look down below is count sum max and min the max and min are the same as i got right here if you want to rename this just do equal click on price and sell d1 and now we know that is price so you could go run that again and do that with a quantity or something else for right now though i'm going to remove this and delete it and i'm going to do another calculated field 
because we've got the price and we've got the quantity, but we don't have any totals here. So I'm gonna multiply the price times the quantity. And let's say that that is revenue. There's your calculated column about to appear. Equal cell D2, which is the price times the quantity. There you go. Feel free to format that if you want to. In fact, I'm going to home tab just to look at just to have it look better. You could make it dollar symbol, but comma works for me in this example. The same thing, I would go and highlight these prices. Maybe I do want the dollar symbol there on that one. Totally up to you right there. And let's go make a pivot table real quick. I usually make my pivot tables on another worksheet, but I'm gonna put it here. Insert pivot table. Table one is correct right now. Let's use an existing worksheet. I'm gonna go put this in cell J5 and hit OK. Over to the far right are my fields. I wanna know for each location, what is the total revenue? And there we go. And then from here, I could go down here and do value filters and do the top three locations, top two, whatever you wanna do. I can sort the revenue, right click, and do a sort, largest to smallest. Feel free to format this if you want to. I don't care about the decimals, there you go. So I could continue to do pivot tables and I'll add to it. We do have a payment method in column E. Let's pull that payment method in. I'm just gonna drag it down here. There are the different payment methods. If you want the payment method, then the location, take the payment method and put it above it. But everything is looking good. Uh, back to just the locations, there are the six cities because we cleaned them up or we would have gotten the 12 we had earlier. And if you want, you put payment method here. This section of the course is not about pivot tables. We'll cover those in another part, but I just wanted to show you, here's where we start doing the actual analysis of our data, but we had to clean it all up first and then get a few stats to make sure everything was looking good. I appreciate your time. Feel free to subscribe and ring the bell. Let me know any comments you have down below. Thank you.